In this week's video, we'll cover an extremely rare stock market signal that's only been flashed 10 previous times in the last 95 years. We'll be moving quickly, so feel free to use the pause button on your video player. This portion of the video is being recorded after the close on Friday, June 17th. For the full week, S&P 500 was down 5.79%. The NASDAQ, despite the gain on Friday, finished the week down 4.78%. NYSE Composite for the full week, down 6.62%. The Dow was down 4.79. During Friday's session, the S&P was up 8 points. The majority of the video was recorded on Thursday evening. None of that commentary needs to be altered in any way. The trends unchanged during Friday's session. This is the S&P 500's chart here after Friday's session. Still has a full bore bearish look. We don't even have a turn up yet in the 8-day moving average. Similar situation over here with the NASDAQ. Still looking at a full bore bearish look. No discernible shift yet in the trend. In the May 27th video, we covered this chart of the MYSE composite. The chart was dated at the time, May 26th of 2022. We're concerned about numerous things, including volume by price here. That could act as resistance. Resistance based directly on price. We really didn't like the look of this downward sloping 200 day in red. And maybe more importantly in the short run, the downward sloping 50 day moving average in blue. And we also noted in the June 3rd video, referencing this chart in the center of your screen dated June 2nd, that any rally attempt that we had seen really hadn't done anything to repair the significant damage that had been done to the longer term trend. Cover this chart dated June 9th in the Friday, June 10th video. We were near areas that had acted as support in the past. And the concern was that they may act as resistance in the present day. If we fast forward to the close Thursday evening, June 16th, 2022, the big development this week on Monday, June 13th, we closed in bear market territory down over 20% on a closing basis, so close to close. And as we had mentioned in a previous video, this demarcation line can be fairly significant because it's not unusual for corrections to end in the 19 point something range because when you get into bear market territory, especially intraday, as we were here back in May, often buyers step up. That's exactly what happened in May. Didn't happen this time. So from a psychological, fundamental, and technical perspective, we're in a different world. The table on the left side of your screen is from the Wall Street Journal. These are the days that the S&P 500 entered a bear market. So those dates are basically identical to June 13th of 2022. And from a common sense perspective, we might believe that it's easy. We should buy now that the S&P 500 is down 20%. 1973 case, one year later from the day that we entered the bear market, we had lost an additional 27%. The July 9th, 2008 case lost over 29%. Median case sounds pretty good. Walking forward from these historical dates that are similar to the close on Monday, June 13th of 2022, the median gain after you entered a bear market looking out one year is about 24%. However, it would also be helpful to know what are the maximum one year drawdowns look like. We calculated those figures. They're shown on the right side of the screen. The average additional drawdown after dropping 20% on a close to close basis in the S&P 500. So once again, Similar to walking forward from June 13th of 2022, hypothetically, the average additional drawdown was 14.07%, meaning the market dropped 34.07%. And we'll say the median additional drawdown is roughly 10%, meaning the market from peak to trough would have dropped roughly 30%. Thus, from a probability perspective, it might be helpful to take those figures 
those figures be in the historical drawdowns and put them on a hypothetical 2022 chart. You could see if we experienced the median additional drawdown, hypothetically, the S&P 500 would bottom somewhere in the neighborhood of 3,400. Average would be a little bit over 3,200. These are the individual cases with the thick horizontal lines. The dotted lines are the average and median outcome. And from a contextual perspective, this may seem somewhat excessive at this point. But in terms of backtracking to points on the calendar, the NASDAQ has already backtracked to this level in this area here. Amazon has backtracked to this area in here. ARC is currently all the way down near the 2020 COVID low. And Netflix is backtracked to a level last seen in 2017. Simply telling us if the leaders have already backtracked to these levels here, leaders to the downside, it is within the realm of possibility that more pain could be ahead for S&P 500 investors. Is there anything else that would help us keep an open mind about worse than expected outcomes until the S&P 500 and the technicals can prove something to us? The answer is yes. You can find this table here, Quantifiable Edges Twitter feed. Here's the Twitter handle here. Clients and regular viewers know that we often cover potentially bullish breath thrusts in these videos and bullish signals. You just flip this one upside down. This is an inverse or potentially bearish breath thrust. Extremely rare. Only occurred 10 previous times in the last 95 years with a little bit of a caveat here. The last signal occurred in 1943. So just be aware of that. While that's relevant, it's also relevant to note that this is still based on human behavior and based on human greed and fear that really remains identical relative to what it was like in 1943 or back in the 1930s. Human nature really hasn't changed. The markets and the way we do things and the speed and the technology, that has changed. So from a risk management perspective, we wanted to know these dates here that quantifiable edges identified in their table here, what was the maximum one year drawdown from the date of these signals? The answer is the worst drawdown table that we've ever created. I don't remember a drawdown table being so consistently bad across all signals. The average additional drawdown, roughly 23%. The median drawdown, again, roughly 23%. And that would be similar, hypothetically, to walking forward from June 10th of 2022. Since we know where the S&P 500 closed on June 10th, we can take those historical drawdowns and create a hypothetical drawdown chart. Once again, the median and average outcome takes you all the way down hypothetically near 3,000 on the S&P 500. These are the individual cases shown with the solid lines. If we zoom in and take out this 1931-1932 case, we have another data set, something that just happened in 2022 that tells us it's possible the S&P 500 could come down to areas where the NASDAQ has already traded. It's also possible it could come down similar to the area where Amazon is trading today. And the average and the median additional drawdown in these cases would take us below the high prior to the COVID plunge. Again, all hypothetical, not a forecast in any shape, form, or fashion. It just helps us understand risk versus reward. We'll also cover reward in this video as well. From a historical perspective and based on present day data, the probability of a recession has ticked up significantly. According to Bloomberg Economics, we're up to about a 72% probability. Always good to know where the 200 week moving averages are located, around 3,500 in the S&P. This is an area of potential support. It is a setup. The market needs to show us something if we visit 3,500. And at this point, that's if. NASDAQ's even closer. This was as of a close on June 15th here. Here's price. Here's an upward sloping 200-week moving average shown in red. 
You may remember this table here that shows S&P 500 performance walking forward after rare back-to-back-to-back MYSE 80% up days. And in recent weeks, we mentioned it might be helpful to try to develop some type of scoring system or a way to try to differentiate between the extremely favorable cases and the cases that tended to have larger drawdowns and additional pain. Even though the median drawdown after the back-to-back-to-back signal, very muted, roughly 2%, if you'd experience this drawdown here, over 17%, or this one in 2009, over 27%, that's pretty painful. And the system that we developed was the CCM Market Pivot Rally Attempt Model, which is a special situation supplemental tool to be used after a significant decline with an extended stay below the 200-day moving average in the S&P 500. So that would include corrections. And at least thus far, that model's been helpful because the scoring system has told us that the S&P 500 has really been unable to check any significant number of boxes, telling us the probability of experiencing one of the more unfavorable cases in the back-to-back-to-back scenario is higher now for two reasons. Number one, the trend hasn't improved. And number two, these are the hypothetical drawdown areas for the majority of the cases. And the S&P 500, as of June 16th, is down here. And these tools try to prevent us from jumping the gun based on a signal alone. Thus, we have a similar situation here. The median gain after we entered a bear market, which is very, very similar to Monday of this week, roughly 24%. And in some cases, there was very little pain walking forward, including the 1957 case. You can see the drawdown here was basically nothing. Market dropped 0.43%, one trading day, and then never looked back. But that's quite a bit different than some of these cases in here. In fact, you can make an argument that this 24% number looks good, but if you just look at these painful cases here that are boxed in orange, the average additional drawdown in those cases was 20%, the median drawdown almost 17%. And in terms of calendar days, if we followed a similar path, the S&P 500 might not find a bottom until the August to early November window of this year. So we wanted to develop another tool very specific to this situation because it's different from the prior situation. The outcomes in 1957 with basically zero drawdown and 1973, a high inflation environment with an additional one year draw of almost 35%. Those are significantly different. So using very, very similar concepts, this is the 1957 case. You can see this would be similar to Monday, June 10th of 2022. And in that case, the 1957 case, if you bought blindly here and went all in, it worked out extremely well. And you can see there's observable evidence, a shift. We got a full bore bearish look over here when bad things are happening. And then we slowly, as the trend improves and risk tolerance improves, we morph from a full bore bearish look to a full bore bullish look. With price above all the moving averages, blue the fastest moving average on top, teal the slowest moving average on the bottom, and the slopes of all of the moving averages are up. It's really the polar opposite to what we have in this window here. So just as before, when we're developing these scoring systems, and one significant difference here is you're only looking at evidence walking forward from this date. You're not looking at any of this because this is in the rear view mirror in the present day. This is where the 20% decline threshold was hit. So really in this case, what you're trying to determine is where is the highest probability entry point? And it's really somewhere in here. Why is that? Because this is somewhat of a retest of this low And the evidence has improved significantly from this point here relative to this point back here. And that's even true here. The math and the trends and the evidence, your risk reward is much more favorable here relative to the observable evidence than it is here or here. And these models are designed so you can feather your money back in based on how quickly the evidence improves. 
And obviously, in the present day, and even here, once you hit the bear market, you don't know if it's over or not. So as this evidence improves, you have a decreasing probability of a failed rally attempt and a decreasing probability of seeing lower lows or a resumption of the bear market. It's similar to a margin of safety principle. Your margin of safety in this area here, based on the evidence that you have in front of you, is quite a bit better than here. And you'll notice prices in the same place. If you entered right here, your margin of safety is much, much lower because you're clearly in a downtrend. Here, you're in a much better risk reward spot. Doesn't mean you're going to go up. You just have a higher probability of going up. And that's how it turned out. You didn't go up here. Remember, we said there's a big difference between a market bottoming, as it did here, and a market that's ready to start rising. Often, it takes time. So in this case, if we blindly pushed all of our chips to the center of the table, when the S&P 500 finally dropped 20%, it worked out extremely well. Didn't work very, very well in the 1973 case. This point here would be similar to Monday of this week or June 10th of 2022. A lot of pain before it was over. In fact, one year later from the day again, that's similar to June 10th, the S&P lost almost 27%. So what your scoring system is trying to do is discern between failed rally attempts, this one fails, this one fails, this one fails, this fails, this fails, and successful rally attempts. And you're also trying to determine where do you have the best margin of safety or a higher probability of seeing your capital grow almost immediately. So once again, if you bought right here, price is in the identical spot basically here as it is here. But your quote unquote margin of safety, and we don't like to use the word safety because nothing is guaranteed in the markets and nothing is safe. The probability of having good things happen is more favorable here even though price is in the exact same spot. Doesn't always work out that way, but it often does, especially after significant declines because it takes a while for human psychology to shift. So just as the previous scoring system tried to help us discern between these cases up here and this case and this case, and primarily that was created to deal with the back-to-back-to-back 80% up day, we've been putting a lot of time and effort into a second special situation supplemental tool this week this tool is used after the S&P 500 enters a bear market or drops 20% on a close-to-close -close basis. Mainly because your starting point is significantly different than your starting point would be during a correction. Your trends are weaker, psychology and sentiment is much worse, your fundamentals tend to be worse when you get down here. You're really dealing with a different animal than you are up here. Once again, the purpose of the special tool is to try to help us discern between a case like 1957, where the market basically went straight up with almost no drawdown, and a case like 1973, where there was a 35% additional drawdown, or 2008, where the additional drawdown was almost 46%. The Fed had a statement and a press conference on Wednesday, and the S&P 500 rallied sharply. The NASDAQ was up 2.5%. So using a tool like this, after Wednesday's close, we can run it through the scoring system, run the S&P 500 through the scoring system, and ask an answer. How much improvement? How many boxes can we check? Or said another way, what percentage of the bullish hurdles were cleared after the June 15th post-Fed rally in stocks? Answer, almost none, less than 1%. And similar to the previous scoring system, the CCM bear market rally attempt scoring system asks and answers 362, very, very similar, one less question, binary questions regarding failed bear market rally attempts and major stock market lows in 1957, 62, 66, 70, 73, 82, 87, 01, 02, 08, 09, and 2020. And after the big gains on Wednesday, that resulted in little to no observable improvement relative to the trends, Thursday's session was ugly.
The Wall Street Journal table here doesn't discern between recessionary and non-recessionary cases. These are the hypothetical drawdowns based on all the bear market cases going back to 1950. It's noteworthy. From Bloomberg, the average recession bear market in the past century is a slide of about 41%. 41% decline hypothetically in the S&P 500 from the peak that was hit on a closing basis on January 3rd, 2022, hypothetically would take us here to 2829, well below this level and this level. It's a breath chart that we covered in the June 9th video. It's dated June 9th. Purpose of showing it was saying the S&P 500 could fall further. At the time it wasn't particularly oversold. As of June 16th, it looks a little better relative to the probability of seeing something good happen in the coming days, weeks, or months. But it should be noted, we're down here roughly around 15, and we're hitting that level for the first time. In the 2002 case, you're down in the same area roughly in July of 2002. The final low isn't hit until quite a bit lower in October of 2002. And then there's a significant retest here in March of 2003. So more pain ahead in this case. Similar situation here. We're in the neighborhood of 15 in the present day. In the same neighborhood roughly in January of 08. As most of us know, this bear market didn't end until March 9th of 2009 and at much lower levels. Here's where we are in the present day. Also similar to the level hit in the early stages of a waterfall decline here that started in, let's say, Q4 of 08. Moral of the story here, nothing's really changed for the most part. This looks better now, but it doesn't necessarily mean good things are going to happen. This is a setup. It just tells us to pay closer attention. We really didn't have any improvement on June 2nd. I really haven't seen anything encouraging as of June 16th. Could things start to improve on June 17th? Absolutely, positively, yes. This look here is still concerning, this tight look with black and teal. Compare and contrast this look here with this turning up look here, this flattish to turning up look here, flattish to turning up look here, Flattish to turning up look here, similar look here, turning up look here. We're flattish and tight, but starting to turn down. Now, obviously, that's subject to change. And it may start changing very, very soon, but it hasn't started changing just yet. Thus, we've had plenty of setups, just not really any significant follow through. So here's one of the air pocket type look charts dated May 26th that we covered on May 27th. And these were the areas of potential concern or resistance that we covered. If we fast forward to the close on June 16th, you can see we're in that somewhat air pocket territory. You've got some potential support in this area here. So we don't wanna make any assumptions, especially in the short term. We're at a point again where you might get a bounce, fill some white space. We're not in the prediction business. Let's just see how it plays out. We know this with 100% certainty. We're in downtrends as of June 16th. How long that lasts? We don't need to know that at this point. So from June 16th, if we came down to this area, hypothetically a potential support, that would be about an additional drop of 6.6% .6 from the June 16th close. Again, all hypothetical. It's a screenshot of the short takes post from June 10th. The MYSE composite week to date was down 6.32%. For the most part, these bullet points that we covered on May 27th still apply. This would probably be the exception. Probably not fair to say that we have evidence in hand to support a final low. That's questionable as of June 16th. We still have evidence in hand that leaves the door open to much lower lows. And any DeMarc count or any oversold reading, it's the same as it was on May 27th. Those aren't buy signals for us. Those are pay attention setups. Price trends and momentum must confirm. Those extremely low numbers in the scoring system, 
an inverse momentum thrust and bearish trends say we haven't checked any of these boxes yet. These concepts still apply. They apply when we move up and they apply when we move down. On May 27th, we said we would take a measured pace until additional observable improvement came. You really can knock this one out. Rephrase that as measured pace until observable improvement comes. No change here. May 27th, the trends were down and they're still down as of this recording on June 16th. All of this still applies from the June 10th video. It's probably not fair to say we're retesting the lows. The MYSE composite is down over 6% between Monday and Thursday. Probably fair to say at this point from a probability perspective that retest appears to have failed, at least based on what we know today. All the statements are based on the facts that we have in hand. If the charts and data shift, we have to reassess the probabilities. An important point as we head into a three, a rare three-day weekend for stock market participants. Oversold breath readings and 200-week moving averages call for maximum nimbleness day by day. We have to leave our egos at home and we have to remain open to a wide range of outcomes from wildly bullish to potentially wildly bearish. It's important that we always be thinking about risk and reward in the stock market there's always another side. In every single one of these cases, there was another side. In fact, after the major lows were hit in these cases, the average gain a year later, 41%. Two years later, about 61%. Four years later, about 74%. And five years later, almost 100%, 97.39. And we all know the only way any of this works is if we had it the next week, and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management LLC or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.